guys just wanted to um, give a little video we just uh, got home from our trip out east and we got all done unpacking um, we're, we had a neighbor actually um, looking after our home for us our garden and our animals so I just wanted to take a head out to the garden and see how it did I was a little like ah, I'm leaving when things are starting to ripen up but um, we're gonna go I'm gonna check things out I'm hopefully gonna have lots to harvest and uh, Hannah's just doing some mowing because the grass grew a lot in two weeks and I thought I'd bring you along to see the growth and I'm like I don't even know like the corn looks like it's bigger I don't know what it's gonna look like but I thought I'd bring you along to see what can happen in two weeks when you're not maintaining it so let's go have a look so the corn has definitely grown quite a bit starting to tassel out I'm really hoping it finishes this year it's a bit later than normal but if we have a warm fall we'll be okay I think and my potatoes it looks like something or someone has been I don't know if you can see it walking around in the potatoes So something's definitely been trampling on my potatoes so whether it's my dog or my chickens or some other animal but the corn seems to be doing well and most of the potatoes seem to be okay so here is the cucumber patch and I can see some cucumbers so we're just gonna pick what we can find there's another one there and we'll see how many we get. These are my pickling ones, as you can see, they've gotten a bit big. Now, some of you may wonder, how come you get cucumbers that do this? They start off really good. Um, it's obviously been pollinated, but I think that it is, um, Part of the reason, like I've had big ones that start off really good and then go funny or misshapen or um, go black or brown. So I don't really have like a really good misshapen one, but this one here is kind of funny. It's got like a second little cucumber kind of started there. This one, it's not um, the same shape all, it's not uniformed. Um, I've had some that were looking really good and then at the end they kind of go black and brown or yucky looking so the reason for this there's a few factors one it hasn't been properly pollinated or it's only been partially pollinated um, the other reason could be uneven watering and the third which i think it could be also is not enough nutrients in your soil so those are some of the factors that can cause um, some issues with your cucumbers and other um, plants that you might have growing. Rain can also affect the pollination. So something could be being pollinated and the rain could actually actually like wash away the pollen um, that was just um, pollinated by insects or um, if you hand pollinate, um, rain could affect that as well. There's lots of factors 
um, weather as well. But I want to say proper, probably more often than not, it's um, in proper pollination or something lacking in your soil, your nutrients and things like that. So here is our harvest um, that we have just from the two weeks we've been gone. Um, my pickling cucumbers went a little bit wild. I've still got some little ones that I did pick. I might be able to do something with them. Um, these are really great. Um, they do get bigger than this, but I've got a lot more coming, so I wanted to pick some of these. Um, for the most part, if I'm not going to pickle them, um, eat them fresh, I will be making um, relish out of them because my favorite relish is from cucumbers. And I'm going to show you how to do that at some point too. So um, if you haven't subscribed yet, um, hit that subscribe button and that bell notification icon so that you don't miss out on my delicious um cucumber relish and it is super sweet it is really easy to do if you haven't tried it i want you to take a look and watch out for that video because it is fabulous um, another thing you may find is some of your cucumbers going extremely yellow that is because they're getting to a point where they're actually starting to produce seed for harvesting so you can plant next year. So it's not that there's anything really wrong with um, the yellow cucumber. Personally, I don't eat them, but a yellow cucumber is an indication that it's starting to prepare its seed so that you can be able to harvest and use them for planting next year. So I'm just gonna go through and we're gonna pick some beans. It's been a couple weeks and I have a feeling there's a lot of beans there. So anyways, let's have a look, see what we can get. My favorite. Well, another successful harvest. This is a huge amount of beans. Um, just from being gone for two weeks, I have so much harvest, which, you know, is a not a bad problem to have. Now I just need to, in between my work schedule, figure out when I'm gonna do my canning and preparation and things like that so that these things do not go to waste. So um, these are my favorite beans. These are the um, Royal Burgundy bush beans and they actually um, turn green when you cook them. And my next favorite are the yellow beans and I forget exactly what these are called. They're either Paul de Orc or um, Igloo, but I think they're Paul de Orc. And I do have a couple green and um, they're not my favorite. They don't produce as much they yield the least out of um, the yellow and the purple. The yellow yield quite a bit, but the purple yield a whole lot more. You get a lot more bang for your buck with the purple ones. And that's why we tend to grow them. So as you can see, the celery is doing really well. Um, it's getting quite big and I'm gonna get to a point where I'm gonna have to um, blanch um, the celery before I can actually harvest any. Um, these poor little um, cabbages actually have come back and are doing quite well. A lot of my basil has went to seed. Um, I don't know if you can see it here, it's went to seed. So I just go around and pluck them off just so they can continue growing. And they bush out better when you actually pluck them back. Oh wow, the smell is amazing. I'm gonna have to start harvesting some of my herbs like my parsley, my thyme, some of the basil so that it can continue to grow and that I can get a um, multiple harvests um, but being gone for a couple weeks really makes a huge difference um, as you can see they've all went to seed but it doesn't mean that you can't use them so just pick off those um those seed or flower pods um, the rest of my broccoli looks like it has come out and is still going to go to flower so i missed out on the broccoli unfortunately but I'm gonna hopefully, I'm gonna 
have lots of seeds, so I'll have lots more next year when I'm home a little bit more. So that'll be great. Turnip is doing really well. Um, the beets, I don't know if you can see the beets there. The beets seem to be doing really well. My second um, sowing of carrots are doing really well. Uh, you can see the onions, my tomatoes. So we staked them just before we left. And as you can tell, we're going to need to um, kind of help them again. They've uh, grown a whole lot since we've been gone. So we're gonna go through now and we're actually gonna pick the ripe tomatoes, which there's not a lot of ripe ones, but we're gonna pick the ones that are ripe. So the ones that are green will ripen up sooner. We get a lot more um, nutrition and energy to the plant. As you can see, my chard is doing fabulous. It's really come along in the last couple weeks. Oh, this is one of my favorites. Oh, it's delicious. Oh, we're gonna have some of that for dinner, I think. This too getting a little bit big but um it doesn't change the the flavor and the um the use that we have for it so that's great my grapes really taken off too they're growing down the fence line there's a couple ripe tomatoes and we're gonna head on over to the greenhouse and see what tomatoes are ripe there So we've got a couple peppers and um, one cucumber and some tomatoes out of the greenhouse. I'm just going to show you all the tomatoes that I did get. Um, as I said, we've been gone for about two weeks, so we've got quite a harvest today. So I'm really happy. Uh, the tomato plants in the greenhouse don't look great. It almost looks like they got really cold. So um, it's one thing, you know, you can't control when you go away. Uh, things happen but um, there's still some coming but there's a lot of the leaves are really turning black and I'm thinking maybe what I'm going to do is I have fish emulsion it's a fish fertilizer and I'm thinking I'm going to go and give them a little bit of a feed of the fish emulsion there's lots of um, nitrogen in that and the tomatoes really like it and I think they could really use a nutrition boost so I think once I'm done harvesting, I'm going to go check on my zucchinis now and um, then I'm going to go and give some, uh, give some love to those poor little tomato plants that don't seem to be doing as well this year. So I'm just going to show you the, this is basically my harvest. I haven't yet picked um, my zucchinis so once I get them I'll show you really what I have but I'm just going to show you my sweet um, banana peppers. I've got a couple of those. Um, we had some red lipstick um, peppers that we got as well. This is actually, um, I believe it's a Kellogg uh, tomato. It, um, they grow quite big and they can actually fit on a whole slice of uh, um, bread for nice for, um, they're beautiful looking and they're wonderful tasting for a nice tomato sandwich. Um, one of my favorites to grow is this beautiful tomato. I don't know if you can see the colors, it's phenomenal. I always tend to have a bit of green on these and I don't know, they're just, they're wonderful. For the seeds that I saved from last year and it really is one of my favorite tasting. And my other favorite is um, this one right here. Um, it, I think, believe it's um, black from Tula um, it is a really nice tasting tomato. Those are my two favorites. It's hard to tell right now. It fell off of the plant. It's not quite done, but this is my pink brandy wine. Um, I haven't grown these before, but I really enjoy the taste. I've had um, someone share them with me and I really enjoy them. So, and these are the um, Sun Gold uh, Cherry Tomatoes one of my favorite cherry tomatoes that I do have and they taste phenomenal. Um, I recommend growing them if you like cherry tomatoes. They're probably one of the best tasting cherry tomatoes I've ever had. And really high yields. You get a lot, a lot of cherry tomatoes 
off of the vine itself. And then I've got, um, these are, these are nice too, really sweet, um, Tiny Tim tomatoes. They're nice if you just want to, um, have a, um, if you just want to put these tomatoes in pots, they do really well because they're a smaller uh, tomato plant and they don't grow very high and they don't get very big, but you do get a huge harvest off them as well. So those are just a few different um, tomatoes that I do have. Some of them fell off the plant as I was picking um, other ones, but they, these, if you just have them on the table or in a windowsill, they will ripen up quite nice um, in the house with a little bit of sun. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, nice. Very nice. Last but not least, I'm going to go and look through the zucchinis and see if I've got any nice zucchinis coming along and some ready for me to pick. Yay! There's my zucchini patch here. And there are definitely some that are ready to be picked. Little babes come in here. There's a nice size one right there. Not too big, not too small. So these lovely guys are the Black Beauty. Um, these are my gray zucchinis, which are really beautiful looking and coming along nicely. Oh no! Something's eating my favorite. Oh, this little pest. Something got into my favorite. This is my favorite zucchini. I think it's a yellow fin zucchini. Oh. Anyways, well, hopefully we'll get some more of those. I might have to plant some in the greenhouse. Hopefully, I'm gonna have to come out. I think, and um, you can see all the little babies coming. That's wonderful. I think I'm just gonna have to come out and do some hand pollinating myself. Um, this one here. Um, when you're hand pollinating. This one here is actually called is um, a female because the female always carries the baby just like with humans and the males Don't have the babies. So they're just always like this so. anyways We'll get into hand pollinating another day. It's a bit of um, It's an interesting topic. I think you'll like it. It's really good if you don't have um, pollinators around or bad weather and it pretty much guarantees you're going to get some fruit. So it's a really good thing to know. You can do it with almost anything. You can do it with tomatoes, squash, um, cucumber, um, zucchinis. I mean, you can do it with a lot of things. I haven't done um, a lot of different pollinating, but I have done those few items that I mentioned. So the garden still looks pretty good, but I will say the tomatoes... Um, they need a little bit of care, they need a little bit of love. Got some browning on the leaves, but they're still growing, which means they're still going to produce fruit. They're growing tall and um, they're still getting flowers. So, So I want to thank you for joining us once again at Plowman's Backyard and just by going through the garden and seeing what actually grew and what didn't grow or what kind of went crazy while we were gone for two weeks. So um, if you are going away, um, having a little trip, you can go away. Um, we have a neighbor that helps us out um, watching our animals and checking in on um, our garden and picking some of our crop. So one thing you want to do um, if you're going away um, with a garden or animals, you obviously have someone who can watch them, but also um, ask a neighbor or a friend or someone to come by um, if you're gone for a couple weeks or even longer to come by and pick your stuff, to come by and pick your fruits, your harvest, your crops. And the reason why I say that is because when you get back, you're going to want to have some of your own crops to have. You can tell them, I usually just say, you know, pick what you want and it's kind of you know, for watching our place, um, you know, have what you want. It's kind of our way of like paying them back or, you know, um, also another thing is sometimes, um, our neighbors, they pick, um, a lot and then they don't want it all so that they leave it on our table or in our fridge for us when we get back. But, um, 
I do think it's really important to have someone over picking your things like your raspberries, your beans, your tomatoes, cucumbers, everything, your zucchinis. The more you pick, the more you're going to get. And so if you're gone for a few weeks and nothing's getting picked, they're going to go moldy. Your plants are going to stop producing and you're not really going to have a lot when you get back. So that's one thing that I do recommend is definitely having somebody come by and really just be picking your stuff. And um, don't be afraid to give it away um, when you're gone because you're if they're picking you're going to have more when you come back it's one thing um, when you pick the the, um, the produce it gives a lot more energy and a lot more life back to the plant that it can produce another fruit so um, it's always a blessing to be able to share anyways um, if you haven't subscribed yet um, don't forget to subscribe today and hit that bell icon so you can see maybe different things like canning and whatnot coming up um, I'm not too sure how soon I'm going to be getting videos out on that. We have a lot of catching up to do, um, a lot of videos to get out, and um, we're really uh, excited about this year because it's the first time, you know, we've been able to kind of do like planting to harvest to canning with you guys so um, I want to thank you for all your support um, and all you viewers out there that are watching us we want to thank you so much it really helps us out and um, we hope that your garden's doing really well too and I hope that you're just enjoying washing us garden if you don't have one so um, till next time take care